I introduce you, Mr. Bruce Press. Take it away. Thank you, Danny. Hey, so, um, so yeah, so this is the first in our webinar series. And as I mentioned to a couple of people, what I'd like to see is for more of our members to get involved and take a few minutes and share something you know or uh, you think everybody else would be interested in. Um, so uh, being a former engineer, um, I think that I have cer certain skills that allow me to, um, to grasp some of the changes into the, um, the Lightroom infrastructure that's happened over the last, it's probably five years or more. Um, there've been a lot of changes and um, as Adobe moved to Creative Cloud and as they moved their workflow with Lightroom, um, there's been lots of opportunity and I think a lot of people are missing out on that opportunity because it seems daunting or they don't quite grasp what Adobe's trying to do with their move to the cloud. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lay out, got a couple of slides, I'm going to lay out uh, how things are sort of organized. Um, feel free to, uh, to ask questions, mute otherwise, but if you have a question, please ask. Um, and then I'll go into like some demonstration of how this stuff works uh, as best I can with a couple of copies of Lightroom and stuff like that going on. So just quickly, um, I, can see, I can see about a half a dozen faces. Uh, how many people use Lightroom Classic? You can raise hands or whatever. I see one or two, three, four, okay. Um, and, and are people using uh, Lightroom on other devices or um, the new Lightroom, uh, the new Lightroom, I'll say. We'll go into that in a minute. Nobody's really using that yet. Awesome. That's what I wanted to hear because that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down through how we got to where we are. Um, I'm going to slap on my pointer here. So um, up here is where we are. I mean, is, is where we started with just Lightroom. There's a product called Lightroom. Um, it looked like um, Adobe was trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink into it. Uh, it had both the digital asset management, which obviously it's, it's, it's big story is the database and the ability to, to store and manage lots and lots of, um, of data and lots and lots of images. Um, but it also had compared to Photoshop rudimentary editing, but it was very fast and you were able to do lots of images at once. Presets, you're able to export it in different places and different ways. Uh, you had a print module, an album module, a slideshow module, had plugins so you could export to uh, SmugMug and uh, all the other uh, third parties and things like that, plus there's more. So it was a very sort of weighty, massive thing. And because of that, they were a little bit behind as um, things were moving to the cloud and some of the more lightweight uh, products out there. So looking at our traditional Lightroom, it was basically disk-based, which meant that your catalog and your images had to be stored on a drive that in some way were directly connected to your computer. And Lightroom was geared towards Windows and Mac. They were meant to be run on, a, it was meant to be run on a laptop or a desktop. And um, so at that time, as things were moving to be more mobile and more cloud-based, they created Lightroom Mobile, which initially was available for iPad and Android, which is cloud-based, which means that it doesn't expect a lot of storage. That information was able to be stored up in some sort of cloud-based storage and, um, and then communicated back to your desktop. So in the next phase, uh, they renamed Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom CC um, in, you know, in their inevitable confusion. Um, so Lightroom CC became the court, sort of portable product, the, the cloud-based product that is available on iPad, Android. And at that time they brought in Windows and Mac OS. And Lightroom continued to be the same Lightroom it always was um, and available on Windows and Mac. And then we come to where we are now, the, the third renaming, where Lightroom CC has now become Lightroom. It is now, I guess, the, uh, the preeminent Lightroom product available on, Apple, on iPad, Android, Windows, Mac OS. It, they've included the digital asset, asset management for, um, for use with the cloud. 
They have now have very sophisticated editing. It is um, almost, if not completely, comparable to the editing features that you have in Lightroom Classic. Uh, presets, export, and, and other things. And then Lightroom Classic continues to persist with all of its features. Um, any questions from that point? Danny, you got anything going on? Just checking chat. Um, okay, so there's a question from Eddie. Should I use one catalog all the time or use as many catalogs as I use as file folders? And the answer to that directly from Adobe is you should only ever use one catalog. Lightroom is geared to use a single catalog. And I'll tell you in a second another reason why you only want to use one catalog. Yeah, I, my question had to do with when oh, Adobe no. sort of broke this off and it became three different versions, but it sounds like you're going to get all to that. So that's my only question. I, and I, I do use multiple catalogs, by the way. I don't use one big catalog. Right, you shouldn't. Um, that, that was very clear. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, Adobe's been very, very clear about that. So to, to use one catalog or use multiple catalogs? One catalog. You should only ever use one. I, I do not do that. So please tell I'm, me why. <laughs> um, anyway, well, we'll, we'll get to that. Some of that will be, will be clear in a minute. Okay, um, that's fine. Yeah, but, I, but basically what, what Adobe says is um, their database is capable of handling as many things as you can put in it. Um, there is no limitation on the number of drives or folders associated with a catalog. So you can have removable drives that are part of a catalog. The catalog does not have to be, you know, travel around with the, uh, with the repository of images. Um, but also, I'll tell you in a second, another reason why. Okay. All right. So here's how the, um, a little bit of the flow, we're going to go through this uh, kind of historically, right? So historically, you had a bunch of files. And um, let's see if I can uh, highlight that a little bit more. Let's do that. So you had a bunch of files. And um, when you imported them into Lightroom Classic, they got stored on your hard drive. And, um, and you would be able to access them, you know, there on your hard drive on that machine. If you needed to access those pictures on another machine, you would have to carry around a copy of either your catalog or those images, right? You did have to export them or somehow synchronize a copy of that, of that drive. So it's a bit of a pain in the neck, um, but it is pretty good at what it does. There are just some uh, performance issues based on how they've done it, some legacy code and stuff. And then when you brought in uh, Lightroom, the mobile version, or what we now call Lightroom, you can import um, files into it, and those would get cached locally, but also copied up to the cloud. So those, um, those images would, with, you know, typical lag, the amount of time it takes to copy things over the network, be available on all your devices. That means that the images that you copy to Lightroom are available to Lightroom Classic, to Lightroom on other machines, to Lightroom on Android, to Lightroom on iPad, it's available, and to a browser. It's available on all of those things at the same time. So basically you have a cloud backup for everything you do. That's pretty cool, especially if you're traveling. So um, the other thing you can do is Lightroom on mobile devices um, will allow you to use the, light, the camera on your mobile device and automatically back things up into a catalog on the cloud. So pictures you take with your, I, with your Android phone or your iPhone will immediately be brought into Lightroom and synced up to the cloud and made available on all your devices. So sort of a one-stop shop. So once things are in the cloud, they're available from the browser, from Lightroom Classic, or any copy of Lightroom you have anywhere. Now, obviously, part of the deal here is that uh, um, it's not unreasonable. I think a terabyte of storage is maybe 100 bucks a year, I think, something like that. I think you get 256 gigs or something like that automatically. So if you have a, um, even if you have 
the photographer's bundle, which is just Photoshop and Lightroom, uh, you get cloud storage automatically just from having that. So, and there's no limitation on the number of copies of the of Lightroom you can you can run. Unlike Lightroom Classic, which I think they limit to two nodes, Lightroom, which includes, like I said, you know, Lightroom for you know iPad, Android phone, desktop, um, uh, laptop, whatever. There's no limitation on the number there. Um, so originally, when they first created Lightroom Mobile, the way that Lightroom Classic was able to share images out to the cloud so it could be available everywhere is through a shared collection. And so if you have it, we'll go through collections when I actually bring up Lightroom. But um, so you can, when you have a collection, you can synchronize that collection out to the cloud and then it will immediately become available in um, any of the mobile versions. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out, let's see. Come on, we can do this. We can go to the next slide. There we go. Okay, so when you're um, importing through Lightroom Classic and using a shared collection to put an image in the cloud, only a smart copy is, is stored out in the cloud. Okay, so the original is on the hard drive in Lightroom Classic and an editable smart copy is available to the rest of the world, rest of your devices which means you can make changes. Um, Photoshop understands smart copies. So if you're in the other Lightroom and you bring up a copy of an image in Photoshop, you can edit it and save it back out. And those changes will be communicated back through the cloud, back to Lightroom Classic, and it'll update the original file representation on your desktop. But only a smart copy is shared into the cloud which means, and this has happened to me, because my, my old workflow was always load into Lightroom Classic, create a shared collection, make it available to my other devices. So I'm sitting on a laptop and I wanna send, print a 20 by 30 out to White House Custom Color, and I don't have access to the original file. I have a smart copy, which means I can print about an eight by 10, and I cannot print the full size copy until I get home and get to my desktop where I have access to the original file. So the way around that, and again, we're, we're talking about modernizing our workflow, is if we load our files through Lightroom, mobile CC, whatever we wanna call it. It's so weird to call, it, to call them both Lightroom. But through the other version of Lightroom, when we load in a file, the full image, whether it's raw or a JPEG or whatever, gets stored out to the cloud, which means that a complete copy of that original image is saved in the cloud and available on all your devices, which means if I take uh, an image, somehow I get a raw image on my iPad, and I use Lightroom to load that into the cloud, and then I go to my desktop, that full raw image is available on my desktop for editing, for printing, for using in what other products or uh, things I want to do. So in a, in a slightly more modern workflow, one of the things you may want to do is pull all your images into Lightroom through the, uh, the new Lightroom and not through Lightroom Classic. Does that make sense to everybody? Mostly? Kind no. <laughs> I, okay, I, I, so, I, so I can't... I, I can't. I, I'm sorry, Bruce. I, I, like, I like the idea of the, the cloud and everything. My confusion is like I'm using Lightroom Classic and I get the smart copy. I, I, this all, this is, I don't know, it's just very confusing to me. That's all. Okay, so when I say, do, do you understand? I mean, I can explain how to use it. I cannot explain Adobe's reasoning or why they didn't do this. I mean, for me, there, there is no reason, there's no technical reason why um, full-size images from Lightroom Classic cannot be synced out to the cloud. But it is, in fact, the case. Now, will that change in the future? I, I, I honestly don't know. But it is, it is a fact, and it's something you either work around or make part of your workflow. Um, and again, for a possible traveling photographer, um, 
loading your files through Lightroom. You have a you have a cached copy on your machine on your laptop, and then those uh, images while you go to bed that night in the hotel get saved off to the cloud, which means that you have full full images available to you when you get home. Um, makes a lot of sense if you're traveling with your iPad, if you're traveling with your laptop, if you're traveling with your your iPhone or your Android, you can use those devices to get your full raw images up into the cloud and safely backed up. So that, you know, that kind of makes sense. Um, so question, question in the chat room is from Christina. She wants to know, so there's no real downside to using Lightroom in place of Lightroom Classic. In place of Lightroom Classic, yes. There are features in Lightroom Classic that are not yet in Lightroom. Um, one of them is plugins. So if you use, like I do, if you use Lightroom to synchronize your images up to galleries on like Smug Mug or Photo Shelter or something like that, that's not available. Um, the modules for printing, the modules for slideshow and album design um, or book, well, I think it's book actually, aren't there. So there, there are definitely features that aren't there yet. Um, some of the uh, interaction with things like Photoshop, like if you select multiple images in Lightroom and say, you know, open as layers in Photoshop, that doesn't exist. If you use on one uh, or you use um, Portrait Professional or something like that, and you wanna be able to just right click and have your images be opened up in on one or Portrait Professional or something, that's not there in Lightroom yet. Um, now, what you could do is you could take that image, open it in Photoshop, and then open it in on one or 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 Portrait Professional. The down the difficulty is, and the reason those things don't exist yet, is that um, other companies' products like um, on one or Portrait Professional don't understand using smart copies of of images from from Adobe. So, you know, if it happens to be a smart copy instead of the full image, then they wouldn't really know what to do with it. Um, so yeah, so there's, there are definitely some uh, issues that Lightroom, uh, that Adobe has left, you know, kind of open and not really resolved. But every release of Lightroom becomes much more uh, functional. And I think if you, um, if you spend some time using it, you'll find that in some ways it's much faster than the original Lightroom, the Lightroom Classic, just because the engine is completely new and all of the implementation is clean and it doesn't have like, you know, a decade of old code sitting in it. So any other questions from there? Nope, looking good. Um, so using Lightroom, our images would never be on our hard drive. Um, that's not true. Um, there is a, they will not sit there as, uh, as individual images. So what, what Lightroom does is it caches them into a Lightroom file. Um, so there is sort of like a, a big bulky file that represents all your cached images. So the ones that you're currently using are there on your drive. So it's not, it's not gonna be slowed down by the interaction with the cloud, um, but uh, they will not be shown individually as like a .nef file or, or a .jpeg or whatever, um, but you can export them obviously. Um, so, so yeah, you won't see folders and folders of images like you do with Lightroom Classic. And, and like I said, I, I use them both. They're both part of my workflow. Um, generally, when I'm doing a job, they go into Lightroom um, and, and get stored off in the cloud. Um, but then I will work with those collections on Lightroom Classic and, and access them. So just like I'm gonna go and start um, demonstrating some of that. And the other thing you can do uh, with, with Lightroom is some of the web stuff like being able to create proof galleries for your clients and stuff like that. So I think that is my, my last slide because I didn't do a lot in slides today. Let me get rid of that. Let me go over to, let's see, 
So let's start, uh, wait, one more thing, right? Let's start with Lightroom Classic. Okay, so this is Lightroom Classic. Um, this is, I have one catalog now. I used to use multiple catalogs. Um, that became problematic and, uh, and since Adobe said very clearly, don't, don't create multiple catalogs, I was like, okay, I won't, I won't do that. Uh, <laughs> so within this catalog, um, these are images that were loaded from, um, from my hard drive. So uh, like this picture, and you can see it's a, it's a, it's a dot DNG. Um, see, do, 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 do. I'm trying to remember, Z, wrong thing, I. Okay, and it's a, it's a full size, right? 3850 by 4812 or whatever. Make it easier for you guys to see that. See, it's a, it's a big file, it's full size. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the images in here Let's grab them all. Control A grabs all those suckers. And then I'm going to go down to my collections and I'm going to create a new collection. Now, uh, one of the things that you need to know, so all sorts of gotchas with Adobe because you sit there and go, what, what the hell were they thinking? Um, for those of you who, uh, who know what smart collections are, so smart collections allow you to create collections based on criteria right, the date capture, whether they're, they're picked or not, the location, metadata keywords, stuff like that. So you can create these collections very quickly by saying, oh, if I shot it on this date and it's, you know, three stars, I want it in the collection. You cannot uh, sync smart collections out to the cloud from Lightroom. Uh, it has to be just a plain old everyday collection which means that you statically add images in and out, right? By actually saying, add this to collection, remove it from the collection. Again, I'm not here to justify what Adobe did. <laughs> so here's my New York collection, okay? I'm, all those pictures are taken in New York, most of them at the, um, at the cloisters. And um, so it includes the selected images that I have there. I'll make this big again. So, I have it include selected photos. And then the big trick here is make sure you say sync with Lightroom. So if you say sync with Lightroom, that's gonna make those images get synced up to the cloud, okay? So I create that. And also just so you can see, well, we'll get to it. Let me, so create that. And up here is where you can see that we're syncing with Lightroom. And again, I guess I can make that big so you can see that. So sync with Lightroom, I've got one terabyte of storage, right? With 37, 40, 30, 374 gigabytes of that one terabyte used. And you can see it's currently seeking the 19 photos that I, that I put up there. Hey, Bruce, how long does it typically take to sync something? I guess it's based upon the size of the folder. Yeah, yeah, and your bandwidth and stuff. So, like, you know, if you're on hotel Wi-Fi, you know, it could take a long time. Um, but, it, you know, it'll get there. I mean, if we switch over to, um, to Lightroom now, let's see, and go to my albums here. There's the New York collection. So, and you can see it, it's filling in. But it didn't take, um, right? So it didn't take that long. Um, and I, I know it it's kind of like smoke and mirrors because it's on the same machine. But trust me, it had to go all the way up to the cloud and then come back down for it to show up here. And again, this is the, the full size image, it takes a little second to be rendered, um, but, but it's in here. And so I have access to it. One of the other gotchas, which doesn't make any sense at all, if you notice, I have this nice organization going on with my albums on, um, on you know, Lightroom, right? So I have, you know, pictures from my phone. I have things from my Red Branch Theater that I work with, right? Um, so those are all organization. If I sync from Lightroom, that organization does not carry over. So, and, and the same way the other way around, if I, if I go over to 
Lightroom Classic and I have these folders over here, those folders don't automatically go over to Lightroom. So um, even if I took this New York collection and put it inside of, I don't know, family and friends or something, um, when I go over to regular Lightroom, um, it's still here and it's not, it hasn't been moved into a collection or anything. So those collections don't carry, just galleries do. But you can organize them on both sides and, you know, and do that. Now, as I said, remember I said that if you load your files in from Lightroom Classic and go over and access them via Lightroom, you will not have the original images available to you. So if I take this image, which was like, you know, over 3,000 pixels on the Lightroom Classic side, and I say, well, let's export the original. I don't know if you can see. Do I need to... Um, Go ahead and make these things big. So I say to export the original, I pick a place to put it. I don't know, let's just put it in my um, downloads. Let's put it in downloads and I say select folder. And so it says, if you can't read it, it says some images could not be exported at the size you requested because we couldn't access the full size original. And you couldn't do that because I originally loaded the images from um, from Lightroom Classic. And so the place to see that is here, where it says it was synced from Lightroom Classic. Locally, we have a smart preview, and up on the cloud, we have a smart preview only. Okay. So let's do it the other way. Let's see what that looks like. So I come over here to my to my catalogs. I go ahead and I create something. Um, I'm going to browse and I'm going to pull it from downloads. And I have images. And I'm going to say, let's grab these images from Utah. So I will control A and I'll say review for import. Okay, lots of orange, that looks good. Let's add these 17 photos. Do, 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 do. So it's importing. Oh, heh. whoops. I meant to create a different gallery for them. But it imported them into the same collection. Um, that's not important. So, um, so now, if I go back over to Classic, and we wait an adequate amount of time. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Come on. Let's force it. Come on. Clearly, the sinking goes slower that way. All right, because watching it sync is not exciting. I don't think there's a way to, to force it. Um, but one of the things we can do is we can view it on the web. And as you can see, you know, oh yeah, there's still syncing. If you look here on the lower right hand side, there's still images syncing up from, from Lightroom. So yeah, they're not totally there yet. So it takes a little bit of latency between syncing it up to the cloud and then bring it back down to Lightroom Classic. Um, but this is a, another example of something you can do. You can access your images on the web. So if you have a bunch of images and they're synced to the cloud, you can access them wherever you go, whether you have Lightroom installed or not. And one of the things you can do with these um, while we're here is you can create a proof collection. So you come over to proofing down here in that little, I don't know what that, that icon's supposed to be, but that little uh, icon with the checkbox is so you can create a proof collection. Come up here to enable proofing. And we enable proofing. And so here is a new link. Um, and if you share this link with your client, 
they will have the ability to go through and like and comment images without downloading them or anything. Um, so you basically created a proof gallery for your clients. So it's just another way to interact with your clients. So there's, yeah, and you can also present it in a nice way if you want to use it as a portfolio gallery. And so let's see if we've got some coming back to, and there they are. So now they're in Lightroom Classic. And if I pick something here like this guy, and you look at the size, it's a full size image. So you can see, so you see I'm not lying. 5790 by 4016 is now available in Lightroom Classic. So now it's available in both places, it's full size wherever I am, and it's available on the cloud, so I can do anything I want with it. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, I think that is, I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to add to. I think that is it. I mean, the other thing that like Danny had brought up uh, last week, as far as cloud goes, um, those of you who have, uh, I assume most of you, if not all, have um, Creative Cloud um, accounts, whether it's the just the Photoshop Lightroom bundle or a full account or whatever. Um, and with that, you do have that same amount of storage, which you can access via um, you know this Creative Cloud app. And if you go to your work, um, you have the ability to, um, to store stuff up there. So you can go to your cloud documents. And these are um, just anything documents. It can be PSDs, it can be JPEGs, it can be um, PDFs, whatever you want to store up there. Um, so that's also just other ways of, of accessing your, your images. Um, but it doesn't give you the... Um, the ability to access the cloud, the Lightroom stuff that's in its own kind of lightroom.adobe.com place. But if you look, this looks a lot like the Lightroom, the what used to be Lightroom Mobile, but the Lightroom uh, organization. So the folders are here, all the different collections. You can go in here to images. You can see them full size. Um, there's even uh, a web-based editing that you can do. So you can load up those editing tools and you can do a lot, if not everything that you can do with, um, with Lightroom on a desktop, right? I can change the exposure, contrast, change the color. I'm doing a horrible, horrible job on my friend A here, but just, just for the demonstration. Um, okay, so I, I think I have communicated what I wished to communicate, and I will open it up for questions if anybody has any. I do have a question, Bruce. So okay. since, since you've pushed everything to the cloud, I know Adobe has apps for my phone yep. and for my iPad. So to push it to the cloud like you just did, it allows me to, to edit them on my iPhone or my iPad or yes, some other tablet device? Yes, sir. That's pretty slick. So those full-size images are available to you. If you, like, if you load it that way, even the smart ones. So like if you are on your Android phone, um, let me see, hang on a second. Let me bring up Lightroom here and I'll prove it to you. Um, so let's see. New York collection. Hang on. It's propagating. <laughs> I think this is pretty slick. I mean, I think you, Bruce and I had a conversation last week. I was trying to do something in Lightroom very similar to this. Right. And um, they both do allow these certain types of things. I like the fact that I could work on my Macintosh in Lightroom, push it to the cloud, take my PC laptop to Maryland PPA and call images while we're in the back of the room. And that's kind of neat. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if you can see, but my phone's sinking. It's still trying to catch up. 
I haven't brought up Lightroom on my phone in a while. So that means that whatever's new has to be, um, oh, wait, there it is, New York Collection. Okay, so you, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but here's my phone. Oh, nice. And you so see basically, all those pictures available on my phone, and I can, I can bring them in and, and edit them. And so I have a, you know, the edit window in here, and I can just sit there and edit it on my phone if I was so inclined. Yeah, I, that's bold to do that. So but it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it, if you, you should try it because the, um, on each platform, it is tailored to that platform. So mm -hmm. um, even on the phone, and I, I know I should do it differently if I was going to actually show you my phone, but um, it's very easy to use with your fingers. I've actually done it. Cause I mean, you can zoom in and you can do things like dodge and burn and stuff. Oh, neat. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so it, it and use it and the healing brush and um, gradients and you know search. There's a lot you could do, um, and I think that a lot of people aren't taking advantage of it because Adobe's transition from the plain Lightroom Classic to being cloud-based and having all these other apps was so poorly handled. It was poorly communicated times. Yeah. And then having the new product be called Lightroom and the old product was called, I mean, they did it so badly, but their actual engineering is pretty good. And yeah. um, doing things like culling on the mobile version, because you're only dealing with, you know, cash smart views is much faster. So if you're used to loading in all your objects to Lightroom Classic, and then going through and doing your culling, it's faster doing that through the um, the new Lightroom. Right. So the the things the files that are in the cloud are these the they're not the XML files. Am I thinking the sidecar no. files? You're thinking no, they're not sidecars. Well, I mean that is stored in the cloud as well, but no, it's the original image. Okay. So cool. so you don't have to go back to a hard drive to find those images. Now, so here's, here's the other thing, and this comes back to your question of why use only one catalog. Because only one catalog per account can sync to the cloud. Mm, gotcha. So what would happen is if you, like, so what I would do uh, in the past, and I still do it now, is I have a catalog for a shoot, right? Because I tether. So I have a Lightroom catalog just for that client, just for that session. The first thing I do after we go through and call images after the headshot session, I take those images and I load them through the new Lightroom. So now they're in the cloud. Now they're in, available to the catalog. Now they're, they're there and I can do whatever I plan on doing with them. If what I was doing was having a, uh, like a session based uh, catalog and that was my only catalog, right? Not just a temporary catalog, but that was my catalog. And I just kept switching catalogs as I moved from job to job. Then every time I switch catalogs, what is in the cloud has to be removed. It gets mm -hmm. wiped out. Because it'll say, you're switching catalogs. Do you want to sync this? Okay, everything out on the cloud gets deleted. Because now you're syncing a different catalog. But by having one catalog, you now don't have that limitation. Yeah, I, I got to look into that because all of my, every session I do is an individual Lightroom catalog. It's weird. Which is okay <laughs> as long as what you're doing is it's temporary and you're just doing that for convenience and then consolidating it into your new catalog. Like if we go over to my, my, my main Lightroom catalog, and I, I do have to apologize because I, I don't always clean up after myself. So looking at my folders, um, where's my sync folders? User space E. So each of these, um, like if you see the, the Mexico Cancun, that was a catalog that got in, included. This Thanksgiving stuff got was a catalog. This restoration, probably not. Um, Utah, Bryce Zion was a catalog of its own. And certainly when you get down to like headshot sessions, like Carolyn's head soft session, stuff like that, um, Tories, those were all, look, it's me. 
um, and Rachel, those were all individual sessions, uh, individual catalogs that I then imported into my big catalog. You know, you can do that, right? Uh, now I do. I didn't know you, you could can do say, that. That's, yes, that's you can say to file, know. import from another catalog. When you import from another catalog, you import the names, the structure, the rating, the edits. So when you import from another catalog, you get everything. It's basically sucking that catalog into the into that's, the catalog. That's good to know. I didn't know you could do that. That that's you can also you can also do the reverse, right? You can take a folder and export it as its own catalog. I and did not you, know that. See, and, I, that and, and that doesn't you don't lose anything in that either. Either a kill of the sidecars, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Definitely worth the price of admission. Oh, well, I'm going to charge more next time. <laughs> I'm not going to leave it. Leave Does alone. anybody else have any questions for Bruce? Uh, I know we're running up on it, uh, 45 minutes now, and Bruce probably has some bagels to make and or tacos. It's Taco Tuesday. No, not, yeah, it is Taco Tuesday now. Not baking tonight. So you caught me in between. So your workflow always includes both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. No, not really. I mean, uh, in a perfect world, it might. Um, but depending on, um, depending on the longevity of the project, right? So like generally a headshot session um, where after the session, what I like to do is have time to go through with the client and do our selects, right? So that means that once we've... Um, I'm just saying if you make a new catalog for a shoot, you can import it into the main catalog yeah. and it'll retain all the file structure and the editing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me let me let me finish oh, answering. Yeah, let me finish cool. answering. I I've made one big hey, Danny, could you mute him? Yeah, I am. Sorry, Bruce. I think I muted you too. There you go. Oh, Sorry, I'll come back. back. Okay, thanks. Um, so, Christine, answering your question, um, if I'm doing a shoot that's very very time boxed, like a headshot session, where I shoot the session, we sit down. We call the images, we do the selects, and I know what I'm going to do is just import them into Lightroom and edit them and deliver and then archive them off. Then that probably is not going to include Lightroom Mobile, right? Because I don't, it's not going to last long enough, right? Um, it might, if I, honestly, if I thought I was going to be like, I don't know, out of town for the weekend and I want to do the editing on my laptop or I think I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on a plane or a train and I wanna play with the images on my phone, then yeah, then I will load them in through mobile and then I'll have access to them everywhere. Um, but, but I don't, so generally for me, right, my major backup, I have two major backups. One of them is a NAS in my house. The other one is my Smug Mug account where I have unlimited storage. And so um, down below here, I get out of folders and get down to uh, publish services. Um, you can see my my hierarchy <clears throat> at SmugMug is pretty is pretty uh, extensive. And so what I will do is using that collection, right? Because the collection is access accessible from Lightroom. I'll go ahead and I'll back up, you know, I'll back up those headshots to SmugMug as well as my NAS. And then I don't really have to worry about the mobile stuff because it's not, you know, it's not necessarily part of the workflow. So I just kind of do as need be for, for most things. But again, I'm not the most organized, right? Um, but it's, yeah. So generally what ends up happening, no matter where things start, stuff gets backed up to my NAS and backed up to SmugMug. And, um, and also Amazon Cloud, whatever. But, but yeah, so... Uh, it doesn't always include um, the the new Lightroom. Okay, does that kind of answer your question? Yes, no, good, yeah, okay. Um, so I heard some other discussion. Does somebody else have a question? Hey, Thank if you, you have any questions, uh, feel free, email me. Um, I'm on Facebook. So I'm happy to help. Bruce, I appreciate your time. Hey, happy to do it. Guys, if you wanna if you wanna participate in our Maryland PPA webinars, let us know. Um, we'd be happy to put you on the schedule. Like Bruce said earlier, it doesn't have to be a topic that 
you need to speak for six hours on. It just needs to be something quick and simple and educational. So uh, if you want to reach out to me, reach out to Bruce. We'll, we're happy to get you guys on the schedule. So Bruce, uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs>